We have a presentation today, Web Design, a Door to Your Students' World. Uh, Pat Phillips is the primary presenter, her friend Alfred Thompson back over there in the corner offering moral support. Uh, Pat comes to us after having taught for 20 years in high school computer science, and then she retired, but she didn't quit. She just kept on doing stuff. She's been presenting at things like this, working with Microsoft and doing a lot of work with CSTA. And so she's going to tell us today about this and come do it, Pat. I'm afraid this is going to make me feel tied to this podium. Maybe I can use that other one. Um, we'll see. Uh, is there anyone in the room who did not get the CD of Expression Resources? You just keep your hands up. Uh, Philip, you're going to need a couple more, it looks like. All of the things that are on that uh, DVD are there to help you, uh, support you in teaching web design to your students using uh, Expression Studio. And my job today is going to be to show you what kinds of resources you'll find on there, as well as show you about Expression Studio and the environment of that and how you can use it in your classrooms and maybe encourage other teachers to use it for a variety of, uh, variety of other uses besides just a course, a session on, um, or a, a whole unit on web design. So let's get started. I'm, I'm well aware that your talents are all about teaching. Um, and your, your gift, so to speak, to your, teach, to your students it, are those skills. Um, we have a gift for you. We have a gift for you in the form of free curriculum, of which you're holding in your hand, as well as free software for uh, your classrooms. Um, as, as Philip kindly introduced me, I taught uh, computer science in, J in Janesville, Wisconsin for 20 years. Uh, I'm now doing curriculum work with Microsoft, guiding teachers in writing curriculum for a variety of things. Some of you maybe saw me this morning in the XNA Game Development Studio. Um, I do not know XNA game development. Uh, however, I can support teachers in finding the resources and pointing them to my good friend Alfred in the back, as well as some other people. Uh, but I've been leading some teachers in a pilot project with that, putting together uh, teachers to support each other in learning game development. We've been doing some things with uh, with expression, we've had a few um, a few pilots of expression over the course of the last couple years, and we feel that the products that you have on that DVD now are um, about as good as we can get them uh, at this point. And so we're not running any more expression pilots. However, I am there to help you if you have questions about curriculum and delivering expression in your classroom. So, where did all of this come from? Well, obviously, Microsoft is very concerned about the next generations of, of developers and designers. And the group a few years ago in the education area was trying to figure out what can we do to help teachers promote technologies in their classroom. And what they came up with in terms of web design from research is that 57% of teens, online teens, report that they're already creating content for the internet. So let's take advantage of that and let's encourage them to even do more. Uh, about 75% of high schools offer at least one web design development course or a unit, significant unit in some other course. And our goal in all of this, after we looked at this, this information and a lot more, was to figure out how are we going to empower, enable teachers to empower te students to create with technology, create with new, develop new abilities, and ultimately, ultimately, we want them to become these tool builders, not just tool users. And with the power of all kinds of technology, whether it be programming or modern web design tools, your students can become that. They can push beyond just the, here's how, how to use it. Let's create something new and significant and important with it. So I need, I need a little survey first. How many of you uh, teach in high school level? Oh, great. Lots of you. How many people teach middle school? I'm glad you're here, because the resources that I have to share with you um, are equally useful in the middle school as well as the high school. So there's plenty for you to, to glean from that, that DVD. Um, and I can offer you some suggestions on how to apply some of that uniquely to the middle school. How many people have a web design course, truly a whole course, in their school? There you go. So I don't have to convince you of any of what's on, the, on this slide, I'm, I'm quite sure. How many people teach web design in their school only within the context of perhaps a 
a, a computer technology class, a biz ed class, something else. It's just a unit someplace, okay? How many of you fall into something else? You don't have web design anywhere that you're aware of or that you, okay, a few people. Um, so let's, let's talk about, just very briefly, since, since you're fully aware of this, since there's so many people here that have web design, I don't have to convince you that kids are the net, referred to as the net gen and they want to express themselves online. And web design appeals to a broad spectrum of students. Just a quick raise of hand, how many of you have classes in which you teach web design, in which there are, you know, a, a really nice balance of boys and girls? Nice, nice balance, as a, compared to a, okay, I taught programming for 20 years, you know, if I could get a half a dozen, if I could get 20% girls in my class, boy, I went out and celebrated, because I worked really hard at that. Um, how many people have, say, you know, 40% girls in web design classes? A few people, okay. Is it predominantly guys? Still, in, in web design, predominantly guys, hmm. Predominantly girls, and you're all, are you in an all girls school? <laughs> Something makes me think she's in an all-girls school. Is that true? <laughs> yes, okay. So you have a really tough time getting guys in, right? <laughs> Maybe the custodian. Okay, all right. Um, whoops, what did I do? Okay. Um, excuse me, go away. I hate this thing. <laughs> go away, Kent. Uh, Alfred? Email Kent and tell him I'm busy. <laughs> you know, when your boss kind of rings you up, you're like, you shouldn't just shut them off, but I'm going to. Uh, so we have an opportunity to help students expand those problem-solving skills with some cutting-edge tools. And if you aren't familiar with uh, Expression uh, Studio, it certainly is classifies as... Are you, are you taking care of this, Alfred? Okay. <laughs> always, always perfect timing. Uh, so web design can be that first step into more advanced technology classes and into computer programming, computer science courses. How many of you that teach web design also teach some computer science courses? You've got this, this pathway. Okay, so there's a few of those. It's interesting where we just find web design courses. Sometimes they're in a biz ed department, sometimes they're in the computer science department, sometimes they're in the IT you know, information technology courses. How many people have, just for my own curiosity, how many people have a um, web design course or major unit within a computer science curriculum strand? Oh, a few, okay. How many people have it within what you would generally categorize as an IT something in that strand? Introduction to computing something, a few. Okay, hmm. Uh, business education? Okay, there's got to be something else out there. A graphics. Is that art over there? It, within art classes. Okay. Any others you want to share? So we find it ac uh, across a wide spectrum of courses, which um, is great because more and more students are introduced to it. However, uh, a bit of a challenge for someone in my role to figure out how to get to you. Uh, you know, I can send things to, to principals. Sometimes they don't even know where this stuff is happening. So what is Expression Web Software all about? So Expression Web, uh, all of you have heard of front page. It went away a long time ago. It's not being supported. Can you hear me back there okay? I'm kind of tied to this thing. Um, so this is the successor to front page. Um, all the things that you, if you use front page that, that created some problems um, in modern web technology are gone. Uh, this is built, again, on standards, uh, create standards-based websites. You can put them any place. Also is Web 2.0 enabled, rich data presentation. We're going to look at some of this. It has power server technology with ASP.NET. Now, that ASP.NET sometimes scares people because they're going, I don't have ASP.NET server capability. Well, the good news is that you can create those standards-based websites, you know, classic, standard, HTML, all those that will run anywhere on any server on it with any with any browser, um, and if you want to expose your students to ASP.NET technologies, you can do that within Expression because within Expression Studio, within Expression Web, that particular part of Expression Studio, the ASP the uh, Informa Internet Information Services Server is IIS is built into the software. So your students can do all kinds of creative interactive things that normally you would have to post to a server that had that capability. It all is all within there. 
And I suspect the line that gets you the, that catches your attention there is available at no cost to qualified schools. And I can almost guarantee everybody in the room comes from a qualified school. Um, we're providing Expression Studio through an MSDNAA subscription, Microsoft Developer Network Academic Alliance subscription, uh, free of charge to secondary schools, middle and high school. If you have a K-8, you qualify, because I know you got those middle stu school students. Um, as a site license, you can put it on as many instructional teacher and student computers as you'd like in your whole campus, um, absolutely free of cost. And as you're going to find, pardon? Uh, Alfred can maybe give you some insights in how MSDNAA works in the college level. I'm sort of charged with high school. Alfred, do you, you want to come up here and talk about that um, very quickly? Yeah, what about private, private, public, as long as qualified means that you are you are sanctioned by the state you reside in as a diploma graduating type part of a graduating type institution. Well, we'll probably approve you if your state, you know, gives you, you know, uh, nonprofit status and some sort of includes you on their list of schools that are approved by the state, uh, which usually is, is pretty generous in most states. Uh, for higher ed, the MSDNAA program is available to uh, all universities. It's uh, a license generally by department. Uh, and if you're a computer science department, there's a good chance your, your department's already signed up. And if you're not, uh, come see me and I can uh, give you all the, f the full details and we'll get you taken care of. You have some of your cards, Alfred, so there's yep. a couple people in the room that might want that. I'll put, Elf I'll put Alfred's cards right here and then if somebody, if that applies to you and you want more information from Alfred, that'd be uh, please contact him. So what kind of, what does the work look like that students create? And we've had a variety of things over the last couple of years. Um, let's see, is Susan Gunn still in the room? Where did Susan, there she is sitting back there. Uh, Susan was Las Vegas, Clark County uh, School District. And when we first started with our pilots, we did some uh, web design contests and we had the entire um, Las Vegas, Clark County School District uh, participating. This happens to be one of the um, contest entries, not necessarily, I don't think it's from, I don't remember if this is from Clark County or not, um, but we've had contests in which we've gathered lots of student, uh, student work. Uh, uh, so all kinds of things. Uh, this, this particular example comes from one of the l units that are on the CD that I'm going to, DVD that I'm going to tell you about in a minute, impacting lives with e-accessories, electronic accessories. Um, some more from the contest. The theme was uh, uh, improving our future or my future in technology. A green future. Uh, we sponsored this contest with the entire state of Illinois last year and the entire state of Texas in collaboration with NASA. So if you're from, anybody here from Texas or Illinois? Nope, we're a long ways from both of those, aren't we? Uh, another one, improving, improving the world that they live in. This was all part of the, of the competition. So those are just some quick samples of the kinds of, of uh, projects. They're obviously just screenshots for what students uh, have, been, have been working with. So what's on, what kind of curriculum do we have to support your work in the classroom? Well, on the DVD, you have everything that we have related to curriculum materials for using expression. You will find some quick start tutorials on there. Uh, this first one, the quick start beaches around the world is a fast paced uh, lessons. It's a, sort of the beginning HTML with layers and cascading style sheets and, and plenty more. Uh, you'll also find an advanced tutorial. It takes them a little bit further. Uh, expression design tutorial, and in fact, I need to back up a second and tell you about Expression Studio. Expression Studio is basically a suite of four applications. There's Expression Web, that's strictly the web design, you know, make the sites, make the pages, incorporate silver light and all layers and cascading style sheets and all the rest. There's also Expression Design, and this last, um, on this page, this last Tutorial, expression design. Uh, expression design is a vector image graphic manipulating piece of software. So students can create their own uh, web page heroes or banners and manipulate other images that they want to incorporate into their, into their website. We also have uh, expression blend, uh, which enables people to work with other kinds of media, um, other 
video type media to incorporate it into websites, and there's encoder. Uh, it's also another high level using Silverlight in incorporating media into their websites. The tutorials and all the curriculum that we have are all about expression web and expression design. Yes, it all comes in, all comes, Expression Studio. In addition to Expression Studio, you're also going to get in the MSDNAA subscription, the free complimentary subscription site license, every computer in your campus. Uh, you're also going to have Visual Studio. So for those of you who are teaching uh, uh, C Sharp, Visual Basic, it's Visual Studio 2010, and it's Expression 3. They're coming out, I th think Expression 4 is trial download, Sue, but that's not in the kit just yet. So what else do we have here? Well, we have this some other units that you might want to include in um, within, within other classes. The electronic accessories teaching unit, a complete teaching and learning unit with tutorials. Uh, they make pages with layers and templates and cascading style sheets. Essentially, it's a two-week, about a two-week unit that you can customize. If you are teaching biz ed class and you're going, okay, I want my kids to learn some basic web design with this tool. Um, and you want to, you need a two week, you want to do a two week unit, you can customize all the materials in this curriculum unit, the rubrics, everything else, to fit some objective you have in your business ed class. So maybe you're going to do the electronic accessories project, and they're going to focus on the businesses that, that make whatever electronic device your students choose. The premise is that students will pick an electronic accessory, be it grandpa's pacemaker, their cell phone, uh, MP3 player, you pick it, whatever the students want to do, and then you customize how they do the research and communicate their learning in a web, through a web page with your goals in mind. So if you're a science teacher, physics teacher, maybe they want to do it with uh, learning the electronics behind it or the development of that, those electronics. So you can tweak the objectives to fit, to fit your, your needs and use this as a tool uh, to, as a secondary uh, a secondary set of objectives. The California Water Animals tutorial is short, a couple days. Uh, students are making ASPX pages in this one. So if you get to a point in your lessons and you want students to explore the ASPX pages and how that's different from standard HTML pages, this might be a perfect one. The heavy metal show car tutorial, this seems to be a mouthful. Um, Richard Tapia. You know Richard Tapia from um, Rice University? Very, very uh, influential in working with getting underrepresented groups into computer science. He also has this incredible show car. And he takes it all over the country and wins huge trophies. And we wanted some project that would appeal to uh, and be useful in like a, a boys and girls club. And so he gave us permission to use his pictures. And we've created this tutorial. And they make the website with this fancy car broken into like 20 minute pieces so they could be done in after school project, summer camp, variety of uses like that. So what about that? And then we have the semester long, I'm jumping ahead of myself here, uh, the semester long curriculum unit. If you have uh, opportunity and need for a semester long curriculum unit, we have, I think, uh, something that will fit the bill perfectly. This particular, and it's on that DVD. Uh, it's a full semester's worth, standards based. We looked at ISTE nets, we looked at the CSTA um, uh, goals and objectives, um, the 21st century learning uh, objectives and tried to put together lessons that would meet many, many of those objectives. All of these lessons in all of these things were created by teachers and tested by students. Um, it thoroughly expands web design concepts and skills. You'll find eight modules, we'll see in just a minute. Uh, I'll tell you a funny story. I led the teachers that created this and when I was calling around, would you help me write this, these units for this? Every single one of the 12 teachers said to me, I'd love to, however, I am not going to write another how to use a software manual. I've got those up the wazoo. I do not need those. I need, teachers need the, the, 
real web design concepts beyond just learning a tool. So when their students step out and they use other tools, they still have those, those solid concepts of design and communication. Uh, it's modular designed. We revised it with feedback from, actually, that should say 200 teachers now. Uh, it's very project-based uh, learning, and it focuses on lots of skill development you'll see in a, in a minute. Our goal is to make tools that can be used by teachers in just about any classroom. The language arts teacher who wants to focus on uh, communication in a modern, with the web. Uh, the science teacher that wants their students to have yet another tool to express their learning, to do lab reports on. Um, any, as well as uh, technology teachers and computer science teachers. So we've tried to put together this series of, of tutorials, as well as a full semester curriculum, in order to satisfy those variety of needs. My personal goal is that stu I want students to think about web design as just another tool in their communication tool belt. You know, we've kind of had it with PowerPoint presentations up to here, and sometimes a Word doc is a perfect way to give a book report. Sometimes, somehow or another, students think that those two things become their primary tools to communicate what they've learned. And because we can offer the software free to your school and free to students for their home computer, my goal is if your school has expression through the MSDNA subscription, your students have it at home, they got one more tool. They can say, okay, I have this project from my history teacher, my language arts, my chemistry, whatever teacher. They can say, what is the best tool to communicate my learning? Is it a video? Is it a Word doc? Is it a PowerPoint? Or is it a web page or website? And they can, they can select what's best. So here are the, here are the modules that are in the, the semester curriculum. Um, you will notice that those teachers held my feet to the fire. And the first place you really need expression is way down here. One, three, five, this is like the beginning of the sixth week, I think that is. Working with images and media, and this is where expression design, uh, the tutorial and the little, the unit on expression design comes into it. History in the future of the web, we had that some other places, and uh, some of the teachers, including Susan Gunn, said, put that right in the beginning. I got kids floating in and out of this room for the first week. <laughs> and felt that that was, well, important, perhaps wasn't essential. HTML basics, you can do it within expression if you want, in the code view. You can do it with WordPad, Notepad, however you might have done it in the past. Designing with communication, we still haven't touched expression. It's all about selecting colors and fonts. And you know, how many of your kids have made websites? On the first page, we have sound effects of rain falling, and it's purple font on blue background. And then on the third page, we've got flames shooting in from somewhere. Oh. Um, so designing for communication, stressing the importance of communication, not just showing off everything you ever learned about uh, in multimedia. Uh, beyond the basics with Expression Web, here's where Expression Web software, uh, and this uses that Beaches tutorial. The design process, the production process, web publishing and maintenance, we had a professional web designer help us create those. These are project-based. Uh, students are, it's intended that students will get a real, um, a real client, be it the wrestling club or dad's bridge club or the humane society, you know, whomever, um, and that they have that client. We have things with wireframes and storyboards and how do you interview a client? What is a meeting like after you present them with your ideas? All of that's wrapped into these, uh, these last eight weeks. Now, what's kind of nice about this is you don't have to do them well, some of these obviously hang together, right? You don't do a production process without a design process. So these three are kind of, you could leave this one off, although that's kind of the fun, fun spot. Uh, but maybe you don't need, you don't, I don't have time for this working with images and media and expression design. Fine, drop it out. Because the images that they create in that one and are gonna use here in the tutorial with the beaches are already finished and they're there for them to just Use those images. So you can, you can pick and choose and organize it. I've had some teachers that said, all I want is this one right here. I want two weeks teaching my kids how to do, use expression. That's it. Other places they pick, maybe the, just these three. So you pick what you, what you want. And of course, those little short tutorials are there also if you're in a scenario where you only have a very short time. If anybody has any questions, just jump up and ask them as we go. Yes? HTML code that was like junk and 
beginning. So if you wanted to code you, you had to wade through this. Is that yeah. gone? It's gone. Uh, all those front page extensions and all of that kind of thing. And we'll look at the code in a minute. Um, I mean, there's some of the top heading code that's in modern web design, but not those things that it's standard HTML. Okay, the w, w, WWC. Is that what it is? Three W's and a C? <laughs> in the publishing, indeed, in this spot, uh, they learn to use that tool. You can publish and put in the where it's going to. And in a minute, in a minute, you'll see how the folders all uh, are, when you create a website, it makes the folders and it saves the images in the folders. So when you publish, it takes the whole thing. And you don't have that broken links because somebody forgot to put the picture in the folder and all of those things. Was there another question? That was it? The, the curriculum is on the DVD that you have. All of those things. All of those things are listed, as well as some other documents, how to get started. And it's set up in a, kind of an HTML sort of thing, so you can just pick and. Yes, sir? How do we get the, the uh, software for the students? How do we get the software for the students? Can you give me five, seven minutes? I'll be there. <laughs> Another question? Are uh, professional web designers using this in the workplace? Um, the answer is yes, they are. Um, I can tell you one really good example, and I don't have a list of of others off the top of my head. Uh, the last Olympics, some of the website was created using expression for the US Olympics team. Um, if you want to email me, I can give you some very specific ones. And I'm going to show you a site where there are some examples. Um, they're constantly adding new samples to it. Of, oh, look here. Here's one done that way. Um, and I'll point you to that, OK? OK. In all of the materials, you're going to find lesson plans, you know, anticipatory set, you know, good old Madeline Hunter, all the rest, uh, tutorials, supporting text. That that um, sub semester course, there there is anywhere from a 20 to 50 page textbook-like chapter to support their learning in that. Uh, there's rubrics and quizzes and tests and student activities and enrichment. One of our biggest complaints that came was, there's too much stuff in this semester course. And so we went back and we pulled out some of the more advanced things and called them enrichment and put them in separate folders. So when you open up some of those modules, you'll find enrichment activities um, within them that you might add. You know, let's face it, if you're teaching eighth graders web design, that curriculum might be a really big bite. If you're teaching juniors and seniors, you're going, man, we whipped through those first three and half the time. That's what the enrichment's for. So there's, there's plenty there. And some of our pilot schools were middle school. So, and one of the writers was uh, middle school, Dave Burkhart. Some of you know him. Um, they're appropriate for high school, upper middle school, introductory, college level. Uh, teachers and students have told us great things about the curriculum as well as using the software in their classes. So I'm feeling very confident that I can say to you, take it. I think you're going to like it. It's going to fit the bill. Um, and I'd be happy to help you figure out what's going to work in your scenario. That's kind of my role is to support teachers in working with our curriculum. So how can we help you? Well, we're going to get you the free subscription to MSDNAA Developer, and there's instructions on the DV of how to get that free subscription. I also have my card up here, and you're, you're welcome to grab that and contact me directly. If you would rather I contact you, write free expression on your card if you have one, and give it to me. Or you can give me some information on this piece of paper uh, and just give me your name and your email and expression. That's all I really need on there. And I'd be happy to send you some information. Thank you for bringing that up. It, it is, um, right now we're giving away a one year subscription put on every instructional computer in your whole campus. At the end of that year, if we're still running the free, I just slide your name over into that active column again, OK? If at some point, that's going to end, obviously, right? So at the end, if, if you were to go out and buy the high school subscription right now, the grand total cost for your entire school, I, I feel like I should be selling the Ronco slicer dicer thing here. Um, the complete cost is $299. 
site license every instructional and teacher computer. Don't you think I could, sli I could sell slicer and dicers with that kind of line? But it's true. It's only, it's, so it's $299, you know, I kind of like, oh man, I'm, I'm giving away all this software. Well, you could go and buy it for 300 basically $300. So that's the renew cost today's price. Um, but we, we're eager to especially get old copies of front page out of schools. Anybody still using front page? A few, a few hands are going like this, yeah? Okay, yeah, this is, this is the perfect, perfect opportunity because let's face it, schools don't have huge budgets to be buying, buying software. So I'm, we're happy to provide it for you. Did that answer the question? Okay. Um, MSDN includes Expression Studio 3 and Visual Studio 2010, so there you have it for both, both uh, departments, and it's for an entire school, not just your department, so you know, you've got it in biz ed or something, and somebody else wants it in the, the Visual Studio or the Expression in their department, that's fine. Uh, install on every computer, instructional. It's not intended for the clerical person who keeps your school website, okay? Now, if that person also teaches, and it's you, <laughs> You know, that's, we're not going to get too picky uni about that. Um, but the idea is if it's a clerical person that's doing it, we ask that they buy a single copy for that infrastructure uh, use. And more than 800 schools have taught with it. I think we're up over 1,000 now. And to request the software, you can email me. That's my, uh, actually, that's not my address. Uh, this is the gentleman at the end of the request. So, and, and the information about getting the free software is on the DVD, too. So pop it in, find that spot. How do I get the software? This, all of this information is there. And essentially, he's going to have you do two things. He's going to say, here, if you want it for your whole district, we don't care how many take it in the school, but each school gets their own separate subscription. So he, he will say, so how many schools in your district would like, secondary schools would like this? And if it's you know, 10, 15 of them, or even six or more, he will handle the subscriptions registering for it. If it's just a couple, he's gonna send you instructions and a code. You put it in and your shopping cart goes to zero dollars. And then the second thing that he's going to ask you is to fax to him um, a document, and it's on that DVD. Uh, it's a donation acceptance letter. Lawyers got to get involved here, keep everything uh, kosher. So someone at the district level signs that form and faxes it in, and about two weeks later, you get your physical media kit of those two. And you can make up to 50 copies of the DVDs. So if you, there's a variety of ways you can get the software to your students. That's one way, make a copy. Check it out like a library book. You're not giving them the software, you're just checking it out. But there's a better way. Any questions there? We want to see what the software is all about here. We gotta, what do we have, till half past, Kent? Um, so DreamSpark for students is a slick way to get students the software for their home computer um, without too much involvement on your part. Um, and again, there's instructions on the DVD for signing up for DreamSpark. University students have been getting their software um, free this way, designer and developer software free this way for a long time, and they've just made it available to high school. And here's how it works. You use the directions on that sheet document on the DVD. You can sign up for um, your school. They are going to send you, literally send you, email, a spreadsheet with 200 codes on it. You snip them apart, hand a code to whatever students want it. They go home, download, get the product keys. They're set to go. So uh, that's, that's the least troublesome way for teachers. How about middle school? Middle school? Middle school? Yeah, you say it's available for high school. Oh, I'm sorry. It, yeah, wherever it's high school, it's middle school. It's, wow. yeah, it, MSDNAA is MSDNAA for high school. I think it's just shorter than for high school and middle school but it's, we're making available to middle schools too. Um, so that, that's a really slick, easy way, uh, the way we're, try, we're promoting. But through MSDNA licensing, you are able to make some copies of the DVD and label them exactly as the original and check them out. You gotta keep track of them though. You know, that's kind of, you don't report back to me that, but you are morally responsible to keep track of those DVDs. Question? It runs on Windows, but it'll run on a Mac that has parallel. parallel. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. And in fact, there might be a couple teachers here that have been doing that. We could get some experience from them. Another question? You still need to put, uh, 
plugins in so it works with browsers? No. I'm going to show you the software here in just a, in a second. I, I think I'm in, it doesn't have those front page extension things, any of, of that. It's going to build standard HTML uh, code. Okay, let's take a look at this. This is all of the software that students can have access to through the DreamSpark program. So if you have some students that are into like the robotics or the XNA game studio, some of these are free other places, but this is a slick way for them to just get it in one, one swoop. So if those, and this is all available to college students and to high school students. Is this an ongoing phase? This is indeed, yes. Okay. I can't imagine. As far as, as far as any foreseeable future that. Sure. Mm -hmm. Actually, they're going unless you order, they're going to ask you how many codes you want, and I would suggest you order enough for, so you don't have to go back and do it again. They'll already give you up to 200. Yes, ma'am. Help, Alfred. I don't know what virtual PC is. How it applies to this. Uh, she saw a virtual PC. I just copied this off and I have it. Some of these things I do not know. Yeah, virtual PC allows you to run different operating systems on your PC. So multiple copies of Windows, multiple types of Windows. Uh, and uh, I believe it also supports a couple of builds of uh, Linux. We actually released some code under the GPL to make that better. So virtual PC runs on the if, if you send me an email, I will can investigate further for it. Okay, thank you, Alfred. No questions. Okay, so I want to show you uh, the software to start with. Let's take a look at this. This is the environment for uh, of of Expression Web. You remember there are four applications. They all kind of look sort of the same, and you'll recognize many things that you already know about all the, the menus, many of the menus across the top with file and edit, you know, it's just like any other Windows program. This area in the middle is where the work is done, where the design is done. Right now it's just showing me a list of all the folders and I'll show you how those folders all came about very easily. This is one of the greatest things, using, using templates. If you want your students to be able to use web design and you don't have a lot of time to invest in teaching them all the ins and outs, show them how to use templates. They use templates in Word and PowerPoint, just another, another source for uh, producing something quickly and easily. Uh, cascading style sheets and tag properties will all be displayed down here. Uh, layers uh, are, end up being accessed from there and you'll notice there's a toolbox. I'm gonna to start back from scratch here. So under the site menu, I'm gonna choose a new site. You notice there's lots of others. There's that publish and publish settings somebody was asking about under there. But let's try a new site. We have one page sites, empty sites, import a site, wizard, all kinds of choices. What I wanna show you is a template just because this is gonna be faster and easier to put something up there. There's lots of, and we're getting a little little previews over over here, uh, lots of choices, and sometimes picking the best one, something that fits their, their um, objectives, their, you know, whatever it is that you're working on. I'll find one that looks kind of nice here. Okay, here's one that would probably work for a sports team. And I'm gonna say okay. Okay, now just open that one, open that up with all the templates and you're looking at here, oh my goodness, look at all these folders. Well, in order, to, in order to create, you want to teach your students when they're building websites, of course, the folder structure. And all of these folders have other folders within them and defaults for each of them. Each of those folders corresponds to one of the menus on the, um, on the main page. So let's get ourselves back out of here. Okay, because this is because this is a template, I have my H default HTML page, index HTML, if you will, 
and they asked me to change my resolution so this would show on the screen. I think that might have been a little bit of a mistake. Um, OK, so this is what this particular template looks like. You'll notice here there's an About button, and there's also an About folder. So you can be teaching students how to organize, how to organize their website, even if they're using uh, a template. As you notice, I move my cursor across some of this. Some of this is not. It turns into a, a slash here. Where am I at there? Where'd it go? Right there? OK, it means that on this particular default page, this is like the top transparency. This is the page generated from the template. I can't make any changes on that particular, on that particular um, page. But you'll also notice that in my folder list here, I have something called a master.dwt, dynamic web template. And the, the template is the place that allows me to make these changes. Those things about the about, you notice here that I could change the wording of about, of about. maybe I want a different link to go to those pages. Uh, I can change the name of the organization here. Change a variety of things on that template. And when I save it, When I, it asks me, do you want to, uh, there are eight files attached to this master. Do you want to update them all? And probably if you're changing the master, the default answer would be yes. I want that to show on all of them. So it saves all of them, tells me eight were updated. So now when I go to the About page, you notice it says My School. So it's going to update all of those. And you've used templates, right? American greeting cards is a template. And you've used templates in Word. You maybe have even made templates for your students for their book reports or things. So it works in a similar fashion. You'll notice down here we have cascading style sheets. Those of you teaching web, you've done some things with CSS properties and that. Uh, all easily controlled and accessed uh, from this window. And we have layers over here. And if I click on one of these, is this built with layers? I've got various layers going on. You know, sometimes you have, sometimes you got, you, you're looking at this and middle school teachers are going, ay, 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 my kids are going to mess this up so badly, right? How many of you thought, kind of thought that, right? Oh, a little bit, you're honest. Here's what you can do. If you don't want them to mess around with layers, close that particular one. If you're not at the point where you're going to be doing cascading style sheets, you just want them looking at the um, the files. And of course, you could just start a new site, one page site, build it all, you know, drag on images, fold containers, drag it all, build it as you normally might without confusing them with all this. And it looks like I added a layer in here that I didn't want. Um, so you can do that. If, I, if the students inadvertently do something crazy, Matt Bloom would have done this in my class. I can tell you his name to this day. Um, <laughs> I would go to the panels, and this is really hard to see here. Re it's a reset workspace layout, and voila, take that, Matt Bloom. Got you back where you want, are supposed to be to start with. Um, so it's a, an easy enough environment. You'll notice at the bottom here we have design view and all of these tools over here that you can drag on. Um, if I did a site, a new site, and just let's just say a one-page site for the lack of something more creative. Yes, go ahead. Sure. OK, so I ended up with this. One page, nothing there. And now I have all these tools over here that students can drag on. If you want to teach about layers, you want to teach about horizontal lines, all of these things, drag a line on, that doesn't, didn't show up. Well, I guess it did show up reasonably well. So I can, I can add all of these tools. You'll notice that there are form controls with input buttons and um, a variety of things there, various input buttons. You'll notice that there's media. You can add zoom, um, deep zoom, flash, silverlight, variety of of things. Here are those ASPX controls that we talked about. Some of these are named the same, but they operate significantly different. And if you make a page with ASP.NET and you uh, try to you know, run it, it's going to tap the internal server and it will display perfectly fine. Um, okay, what I wanted to show you here was the code. Somebody asked about messy code. This is about as unmessy as you can get. 
and all of them create standard, standard code. So if you want your students to be uh, creating, changing things and doing it just from code, this works. Uh, many teachers I talk to say, I want them to see both. So if I go up here and if I highlight this, did it do it on my screen? I've got the horizontal rule selected and it highlighted the horizontal rule right here, right? So if I choose something, if I do it in the code, I highlight, select that, in the design it instantly selects it. So if there's a problem, they can go to the code, they can fix it. So I think you find it very valuable from the standpoint of being very technical for your advanced students and certainly adaptable with the tutorials to make it easy enough for uh, your younger students or your beginning students. Um, previews are, are um, well this isn't exactly, this is not a very exciting uh, thing to have a preview of, is it? Um, I'll go back to this. Okay, we're back to this one and we can go to the calendar page here. Here's the default calendar. Um, close the Go back to the design view. Uh, apologies for this rather poor resolution that I've chosen to show this in. Um, but at any rate, the format, and there's super previews where you can literally compare, uh, provided those browsers are on, on your computer, you can compare two screens. You can have side by side. What does it look like in this Internet Explorer version and a different browser? So you can see um, back and forth. I'm not sure if that's opening up or not. All right, some questions about the environment at all? Okay, so, oh, here we go. Go from that. I wanna show you where there's some more resources here. I'm gonna wish I hadn't gotten into this maybe. Uh, but the gist is here, you could pick different browsers and it would compare it side by side. So you could see the two different things. So let's show you where there's some things that you're gonna to want to know about that can get out of this. Oh, you just saw that flash by. That's, that's what the screen would look like when the super preview is on and you'd be able to pick which one was where and you know, actually look at them side by side, but we won't do that. Okay, so some places where there's more resources. On the DVD, everything that's of our curriculum that is on this page, and this page is, there's plenty of links to this page on there. Um, all of the things that are in our uh, Learn are on the DVD. Plus there is this particular expression site and the Learn tab, which is the page that I'm on right now, has a variety of training videos for your use. Now some of these are very, very advanced. So the kinds of things professionals use. Um, but there's a getting started in web design document on that DVD as well as I have a half page here I'd like welcome you to take. There are, DV, there are videos here, some of them are four minutes, five minutes, 13 minutes, on and on. Every little thing that you might want to use, have your students learn about, is there. And amazingly, this and the help menu in Expression are very, very user friendly. So you have students that are going 90 miles an hour and they want to do something with uh, drop down menus. Uh, you send them here and say, spend five minutes and 45 seconds Learn it, share it with the rest of the class. So you can, you've got lots of opportunities for additional resources as well as, here's that gallery I was telling someone about. Ever so slowly. Uh, gallery of resources, different samples of things, as well as sites that have been done. And all of a sudden, I don't find the oh, uh, web templates, more templates, behaviors, variety of things. Here's, uh, I thought this was the spot that had the already made ones done. And it's not. Maybe it's in the library. So they tell me I'm running out of time here. Oh, I have 10 minutes? OK. OK, so I have this to share with you. I would like to ask answer your questions. If you'd like to take a website, a website, a card and contact me. Um, if you would like me to contact you, you fill that in. If you need Alfred, here's his. And this is the document I was telling you about uh, getting started, a jump start in web design skills. It lists three or four videos, have your kids see the very, very basics, suggests uh, a certain um, uh, tutorial, and some other activities to fast get started. 
So do we have some questions? Feeling comfortable? Okay, I think that I didn't have anything else in here. I showed you all of those. And okay. tutorials are there. Um, if there's, some of you maybe have heard about uh, Kodu. Has anybody heard about Kodu? I would like more information about Kodu, a graphic programming environment for young students. I'd be happy to tell you about that. It's very appropriate for um, middle school. Pardon? Middle school, very much uh, a middle school thing. And the XNA Game Studio, I'm uh, sponsoring a pilot this fall for computer science teachers that want to include XNA game development. Prerequisite is that your students have some programming background prior to it, be it a Visual Basic class or Java or you know HTML to a point, but I think that might be a little bit of a, a push. I would think maybe a little bit more than that. But if they have some computer science background, I'd love to include you in the XNA game development uh, pilot program this fall. So I think that is the end. Anything else you want to add, Alfred? Alfred, anything else you want to add? No? Question? How does it compare to Dreamweaver? Um, it, they both build standard HTML uh, projects. Um, this one's free to your school. <laughs> um, uh, in terms of how it actually uh, works, they're both menu-driven, drag and drop. Uh, this one does have ASPX capability. I don't believe Dreamweaver does. Um, anything else you want to add to comparison? I have not used Dreamweaver in a long time. And, and actually, version four is, is out there. It's just not in the teacher kit yet, or the MSDNA thing. No, that's a fair question. I mean, but I have not sat down blow by blow. Probably should do that. It's an annual subscription. Oh, this is very important. Oh, my goodness, very important. The software does not time out. OK, you put it on your computer. You know, some of you have eight-year-old front page. Mm, you could have eight-year-old eight, eight year old expression, but I'd probably be hounding you to update. Um, uh, does not time out. Keep it as long as you want. Here's the catcher, though. If you, if you get a new lab two years from now and you're still hanging on to that DVD that you got in this year's subscription, the license says you need to have an active subscription to install on additional computers. $300. You know, try to get a site license for just about anything for that, right? It, it does run out after one year. However, whatever software you've installed, it just stays there. You use it forever. We don't care. If you want to renew, it's three hundred dollars. If I'm still offering it for free, I'm going to up your up your subscription. I just don't. They haven't told me that they're going to quit doing it, but someday they will, undoubtedly. All right. Yeah, that was an important thing. It doesn't time out. It doesn't run out. It's yours to keep. Same for students, sure. Okay, I think that's it. I've got things for you here.